G'day and welcome to Dave's Model Workshop. Um, today I'm going to be fixing the wings on my Fokker. Um, in my last video some of you guys noticed that the wings still had a bit of a droop to them which you can see here even after I had finished the rigging. So I have to fix the anhedral and that's not a word I knew until this week. Uh, I knew of dihedral which is where the wings <coughs> which is where the wings come up like that, but I didn't know about anhedral where the wings droop down. Now I know. So yeah, a couple of you guys spotted that in the comments on my rigging video, and I had hoped that when I rigged the top surface it would kind of take the tension and bring the wings back from droopy back up high like that. Hasn't worked, mostly because this bit just isn't strong enough to take all that tension. I really just didn't feel comfortable in really strengthening the tension on these top ones. So, time to fix the anhedral. And my plan is, I'm going to take off the little cockpit canopy. My plan is to use a couple of tins of Humbrol and this and some Tamir Extra Thin. So I'm going to fix that up. Um, yeah, I'm just going to put it upside down on this guy and then hopefully the wings will get weighed down. The beauty is it's got quite a flat top surface in places. Fingers crossed, this works. If it doesn't work, I'll be swearing and blinding, I swear. Alright. I might even have to weigh down the back of it as well. Whoa, precarious, isn't it? Bloody hell. Oh boy. Nervous. All right, I'm going to put some toilet paper on here just to cushion it a little bit. I thought this may be the case, and also to give it just a bit more of a forgiving surface to sit on. Right, what have I got here? I'm going to put. No, that's not going to work. <laughs> Best thought out plans, hey? Uh, what can I drape over the back of that? All right, back in a tick. Okay, after a couple of experiments. I've got a sock. <laughs> Adapt and overcome, people. Adapt and overcome. So yeah, this sock will hopefully stop the whole thing tipping one way or the other once I put my tins of Humbrol onto the wings. Alright, carefully doing this to not stuff up the rigging that I've already got there. Probably should zoom out a little bit. Let's see if this works better. So you can actually see the whole thing. Oh, excuse the mess behind it. Terrible, terrible. <sighs> Alright. Is it too much? Oh, is it too much for the sock? I feel like it might be. I'm gonna move them closer. I might need to find something lighter. I'm going to turn my head upside down and look at that. And that looks pretty perfect to me. The wings look exactly like they're coming out straight. Oh man. <laughs> I was holding my breath there, I think. Alright, so now my plan is some Tamir Extra Thin Cement. And I'm just going to glob it in. Glob. I'm going to finely let capillary action add it into the seams at the wing roots there. So I'm going to do that off camera because it is too hard to do that in amongst the rooking and holding a camera all at the same time. So I'll come back in just a second. Right, that's in there. Again, holding your breath moments, guys. So I'm going to zoom in. Luckily, this is meant to be a quite a grubby vehicle. Um, and you can see where it's just kind of stained a little bit. Again, making care not to destroy my rigging. You can see where it's stained, you've got kind of this water stain. Now for me, this works. The vehicle is meant to be grubby and the fuselage fabric is meant to be quite stained. So I'm happy with that. It doesn't bother me. If I was building this as a pristine bird, mm, not ideal. That's what it's like on the other side. So again, a little bit of grubbiness, but you know what? I had already painted grubbiness down there. So in this case, it's not a bad thing. But like I said, if this was a pristine, you know, beautiful piece of work, fresh out of a factory, that would be a bit of a bugger. Now, a couple of people suggested to me 
that I should invest in a jig which would hold my biplanes or my monoplanes upside down. And I'll show you an example of one that people sent to me. And yes, that would make life much, much easier. I wouldn't be stuffing around with socks. <laughs> Which, even for me, is a new low. Um, but, oh man, the price, I don't know, like 70 80 $90. I, if I get more into building wingnut wings and World War I aircraft, maybe it's worth it. I mean, it could also be used for World War II aircraft, which I have painted and built a lot of. But, I don't know, I just can't bring myself to pay that kind of money when I can do it with an old takeaway container and a sock. But, it would be a lot easier, definitely. Um, I don't know, I'll keep thinking about it. But it does make me think that this is a good time to mention to you guys. Um, if you haven't looked at joining the Mod Squad yet, please consider it, because I've got two new retailers on board just in the last week or so. Um, the Mod Squad, for those who don't know, is my customer discount, or my members only discount program. So basically, for $3 a month, you get to help support Dave's Model Workshop, which is lovely, but you know I don't expect that for nothing. So to give back to you guys, I've arranged with a number of model retailers to get you a 10% discount. Ongoing 10% discount, all you need is the special code that you get when you join up. So I'll put a link here. If you haven't thought of it already, yeah, please consider. But the two new guys that I've got on board just lately, uh, SJS Hobbies, which is based here in Australia, so good for any Australians who are watching this, and the other is Spray Gunner, Spray Gunner's Arsenal, which is, um, which is based in the States, I believe, and they specialise in airbrushes. So 10%, if you're considering a new airbrush purchase, 10% off is pretty good. That certainly makes it a lot more affordable. Um, so yeah, any of my members, bang, I'll send you a special link with the codes that you need to use for those two retailers. Happy days. Uh, for anyone else who's not yet a member of the Mod Squad and is considering it, please do. Just chatting while I wait for that glue to dry. Um, yeah, if you haven't considered, please do consider because, you know, three bucks a month, if you're already spending 30 bucks a month on model supplies, you save that money. Bang. Happy days. Um, yeah, I reckon this glue is probably dry now, so yeah, please do check that out. Alright, moment of truth. This stuff dries pretty quickly. I love it. Took me an extra thing. If you haven't got some, oh man, you've got to get some. It's the best. It is the best. I know of modelers now who only use this, only ever use this. And, you know, I do a combination of this and super glue. Obviously, I use super glue for photo etch and stuff like that, but I know modelers who only ever use that on plastic now. They don't muck around with anything else. I still do use the normal Tamiya cement, but um, this stuff's great. Oh, it's the best. Okay, I'm going to take those off and see how it looks now. Fingers crossed. Alright, if it hasn't worked, I'll come up with plan number two. Plan number two? Plan B. Whatever. If it has worked, then I'm a happy camper. Take those both off at the same time. Take off the sock. Again, sock. I promise you it's clean, I promise. I'm going to lift it not by the wings, but by the fuselage. And I reckon that's better. Those wings look straighter to me now. I'm happy with that. There's still a teeny tiny bit of a droop here, I think. But, I'm happy. Okay guys. So pretty soon I'm going to do a final reveal on this, where it's actually shown nicely, not with a whole bunch of crap behind it. Um, hope this has been helpful, hope it shows you how to adapt and overcome and use stuff that you wouldn't normally use, and yeah, again, please consider joining the Mod Squad, it really, it helps me and it helps you, so everyone's a winner. And thanks to the new retailers who've come on board, both SJS Hobbies and Spray Gunner. Alright guys, I will chat to you next time, see ya.